Our mission in this video will be to add the volume control on the second encoder on the Stream Deck Plus. We um, are in this emulated environment of a Stream Deck Plus. In previous videos, we have seen the real Stream Deck Plus just next to me, but for convenience reasons, we'll just focus on this one. And in the previous video, we just made this graphic over here, which is pretty dynamic because as I am turning the encoder down here, then you can see that I um, this corresponds to turning the encoder. I'm changing the frame rate of wipes, and if I click once, then I get back and I can change the wipe transition. So this is exactly what's happening on my Stream Deck Plus just over here. We just see it on the screen. And now we'll do master volume on this one. If you want to see what the end result is supposed to look like, then watch the very first video where it's all demonstrated. But right now we'll get right into the coding because there's a lot of coding in here and we have no UI to do these things. So I'm unwrapping features under the hood. By the way, how do I know that this is how it works? Okay, let me just see. I think I have a download document. So uh, let me just find, no, wait. I'll just I'll just go to GitHub and um, we need to go to Skahoy GitHub. Okay, I'll just do that in Firefox because there I'm not logged in because this is public. So um, see, ah, this is our wiki. A great place, by the way, for manuals, but GitHub, Skahoy, let's just check this out. And there we should find support. So if we search for repositories, support, inside of the support repository, you have like uh, manuals under Skahoy, there you find graphic manual. And inside graphic manual, there you have actually the document that is explaining all of this, um, the display graphics and composition mode that is uh, being used. So basically what we are dabbling with is something that uh, you find Ooh, more pages. Yeah, please download this document. There's a lot of pages in here. And this starts to smell like compositions. That's what we are using to create these very advanced graphics composed of several elements. So there you have a little bit of a tutorial with some explanation to what the various features mean. But this is what we are doing um, inside of Reactor right here. Now, on this one, the encoder is pretty simple. And last time we created the layer transition for this whole thing. We'll create another child layer for the plus for video layer. We'll call that volume control. If I could spell. Control, yes. All right. Submit. And there we go. I'll just uh, go out of simulation mode. Right click, create behavior. Make sure it's created on this layer. Yes, it was. Volume control for both display. Oh, that was a mistake. You see, I just, I, I don't know why. Somehow I was um, having this selected and then also right clicking on this one. So I actually created two behaviors, one for display number one, which is this tile. And that is now overriding what is on transition layer. That was not my intention. So I'll just delete that one. And then you'll see this one is falling back to what it came from. So the layer tree is like a stack. And any behavior you define for any element on your Skyhawk controller, Stream Deck or whatever. This is a Skyhawk controller, one of the old ones, the C31. Then um, that behavior is gonna, if, if it's on a layer that is visible, that means it's blue on the edge, it is going to override whatever is underneath. So this is, this is how it works. It's just stacking like Photoshop, Illustrator. Just imagine an object there, which is occluding something else by being on top of it. And that's how stacking works. And we use those stacks to enable and disable behaviors to create navigation. That's extremely strong. It's such an amazing concept of what you can do. It can also be pretty overwhelming. And that is one of the disadvantages of the tree here. And we are working on that to make certain ways of interacting with our controllers more straightforward. But it is an insanely powerful tool. The encoder is now defined here. And I just wanted to basically quickly show you that for master volume, I think we can just search here for volume position. That's usually what you use. Volume display is the value in dB. So that is usually the one. Uh, volume position is more like an integer value that is good for adjusting it. And then for display, you would use the display, if I remember correctly. So basically, just putting this in here, it's going to search for behavior. And because I know it's a pretty large value range, it is very likely that we want to use uh, step change long range. So uh, let me just quickly see if that this actually works. So I'm now in simulation mode, and we can open the uh, ATEM software control here. Let's have the uh, master audio visible for us. So we see it over here on the side. So that helps us a little bit. If we just take this to the side, we can see that ah, values are changing. Values are changing right here. Notice that as I'm pressing the edge here, 
then they are changing. But I also want to step change long range, step change long range. That is for larger ranges. And the nice thing about that is that as you press the top of the encoder, then it, it, it will allow you to check in and out of a fine course mode. So the values I'm currently seeing is more or less the same, but I click once and then the values changes I'm getting now are bigger than they were before. So um, this is um, a pretty nice thing about the uh, step change long range that we'll be using here. If you go into the JSON of that one, you'll see step change long range is a master behavior. And if we show the parent of the master behavior here, then you'll see that we actually have a variable inside of the behavior. We do not have a UI for variables in behaviors at the moment. <laughs> I think they forgot it. <laughs> so it was like, ah, there are variables inside of behaviors. Yes, there's variables inside of that. So you will, at some point, you'll have, just like you can see variables from, from uh, layers in the tree, you'll be able to see them for behaviors as well. When you press show more, they should be somewhere in here, but they are not at the moment. So you need to use the JSON code for that. But we'll use that. And, um, and and then we need to put this graphic in place. So now we have we have set the basic function up. We just need to show something beautiful. And for that, uh, I'm going to copy paste. I just go into the behavior of the type here. Um, we could take, yeah, that one would be fine. And then probably I would just uh, maybe collapse this guy and then say, OK, everything feedback default is super fine. So I'll just take that I will now select my layer up here I'm already there create behavior am I ooh now I'm creating it for two once again watch out be careful create behavior for p216 it might be that we'll just know when we create okay display 2 that sounds great and we see something so if you see something do something uh yeah so we put that in now I just replicated I copied the JSON code of the adjacent field here. Now, obviously I didn't want that, but hey, there's one thing that the first thing that I really wanted to do is uh, first of all, these layers in here, the first layer with all the boxes and so on is probably where we would edit. But I am going to copy over and explain to you what we did for the volume in the first one. But what I wanted to show you is this, because the background image, if I save right now, so you just get the background image because it just removed the layer with all the stuff on top. What I want to do here is to add offset X and 200. I know that 200 pixels is the size of this guy. So as I'm doing that, no, it's not 200. I'm like pushing it in that direction. That's a bad idea. I want to do it minus 200. Okay, so that I'm sort of you know, stepping to the next place in this one. And you see there's a perfect overlap between these two. You may see a tiny black line, and that tiny black line is actually not on the display on the actual Stream Deck Plus. So that's not an issue in real life. It's a very tiny black line. I don't even see it right now. So even in the simulator, it can be completely gone. Now, we're going to build on top of that uh, on this uh, display behavior here. So um, I simply want to go and check out how this code was done in the... Um, uh, original if you want. Now, it, and, and this is how it looks, the behavior disp2 in, um, in, in the project code that I did prior to this video recording. And the things that we want to copy is essentially this layer and this layer and also this composition. And then finally, we have the image down here, which if we go all the way to the bottom of this long base64 encoded image, you have that minus 200 offset X, and then we have this shrink mode at the very bottom as well. Now, that mm, the shrink mode is one that is, um, if you ignore that, it means that it won't give you a line of black pixels on the far right of these tiles. So um, this is why it's there. It's a little bit difficult to explain if you didn't see it, but it's there. Now, let's copy these ones one at a time. We can just copy this part of the layer tree over into our composition here. So I'll just place this above this guy and save. Let's see what we get out of that. Ooh, that was uh, pretty productive, wasn't it? It uh, was apparently the header and also the value of the, um, um, the volume. So great. Um, Let's check if this is uh, what we expect. Um, we have this rectangle here, which is uh, basically the rectangle behind. And actually, I have two rectangles. That's a, that's a mistake. 
I can't tell you exactly why this is, but it's the lower one that is the, the, the true one. This is very close to the rectangle over here. If it's not exactly the same, it is basically just this black rectangle. <clears throat> On top of that, we have text and we have this one in a little, um, sorry, that's the master volume text up here. That is the title. And then we have this one in a different font size that I use for this one over here. And it is pulling values out of black magic, uh, the device core, Fairlight Audio Mixer Master Volume Display, current name. So that's how we get the dB value into the display. Okay, I think that we have been through that. So I'm more interested in what is on the upper layers. That's where the, the real beef is. Um, I want to start out with this one and see what that is. That's a widget. And a widget is a little pre-made cool, awesome thing. And I made one comma too much. I don't even know why, but that's this is the widget, okay? Um, so the widget is something that, uh, you know, pre-made graphics, automatic graphics that we have inside. And one of them is like having a strength bar. And uh, we call that um, strength here. I don't know what subtypes we have. Do we have other subtypes? I don't know. Okay, there's apparently no auto completion on that value, so I'll just keep this one, but it is the data it is using is coming from the master volume position. And in this case, like you have to, when you're dealing with VU meters in the system, you use modifiers for the current value normalized. And that means the value gets out in a range between zero and 1000 so that the system has a normalized value range it can use to generate such gauges as this one is, this widget that I'm talking about. So just place this in here and it will actually be somehow documented inside that manual we just looked up on GitHub right here. There is actually a section about widgets if you search inside this, which you can do on your own. Let's move over and find some more code we can copy paste. And the next one would be this one, which is a little nifty detail. So we need to put this in between the two other layers. Let's just see, we have the widget and then we paste it in here. So, okay, so what happened? Really nothing happened apparently, but notice, let's go to simulation mode. Let's just press this button here. Uh, why are we not changing anything? I'm concerned. I don't like it. Why is that? Um, uh, okay, I have this connection to my ATEM switcher. My network is crap today. I think we're back online. Amazing. I have two kids somewhere on my network playing video games and that kind of blocks for the grown up stuff once in a while. But I think we can continue now. So that's awesome. Uh, the issue that I faced was that I could not really change the volume here. But now that I'm connected to my ATEM switcher again over the network, then I am able to. Now, if I press this one, then uh, I should see a little. I mean, I had this previously. We saw that there's actually a fine course mode hidden in here. And normally that's hidden in a variable defined by the encoder and within that zone environment. So you don't see it. It's not exposed. But notice if I press and I press, I make like small steps, but I, I just press once on the encoder, like pushing the encoder, then I, I just make a step again and see, I get a bigger step. So it's like by a factor of five or something like that. Now, that fine course mode is actually due to a variable that is on the encoder too. So we see it if we open the JSON of this one. No, actually it's inside step change long range. My bad. Okay, so it's inside the master behavior. This variable right here inside the behavior is local to that behavior, but if I take it out on the layer level, which I just copied it, I copied it. So I, I can put it up here. If I edit the layers JSON, and I'm just about to do that. So we see this layer has our, our disp2 and ink2. So if I just take that out here and I let's see, I just copy it in here, paste. Okay, so the variable syscourse mode being used inside encoder2 locally is now put up here. And because the default is that if a variable has already been defined, it is going to be left defined. And that is, even though it's being defined inside encoder2, it will be using this version of the variable. So as I save now, 
And if you look at the display, because in the display, this is the, the, the main point, what I just copied in is that I have a little block of code here that is looking if the variable called syscourse mode is actually equal to the value course, then it's going to show this. So whatever that is, if I press this one, notice that little icon that, uh, that uh, appeared there is actually now indicating whether we are in course mode or not. So just check the values again. If I'm pressing here, I have big value changes, okay? If I just disable course mode and I press again, I have smaller value changes. So this is our sys, um, sys course mode variable being indicated in the graphics. So in other words, what you've just seen is that we can actually make our compositions depending or conditional of whether variables or even device call very uh, values. I mean, just like we are including the value of the audio master volume position here. So we can just take a whole layer and make it active depending on a variable. So by the way, what else is in here is actually I have this little uh, box thing going on and I would just quickly want to show you because I, this is a very useful concept. Show box on top. I will just set this one to true because that helps us for debugging purposes to see that, hmm, okay, this layer, this layer right here is sort of defining a working area and that working area is 50 pixels wide, 18 pixels high. It is aligned with the top and the right. And then we are offsetting it five from the right and 20 from the top. And that's the little working area we have right here. And what happens next is that I'm typing, I I'm choosing the type graphics. And then the two things that I do with graphics, if you look at it, I'm not one place specifying the size of the rectangle. It's just filling out the box. And I'm not specifying much else than the text size for the text. So sometimes having a box that is giving you a, a defined working area is a very helpful way to then work with the content inside. And you can also, there are other features you can do about that. Once again, please go over and look at the document. If you want to study all this graphic stuff, then please go into that document we have on GitHub that is showing you all these goodies about our composition and graphics engine inside of Reactor. It is all documented there, although it is JSON code. And this is why we have four chilies on this series. Sorry about that. Uh, let me just disable this. Uh, so this is just a little debugging thing that you have this show box on top. So we'll just disable that again. Hey, uh, guys, this is basically what I wanted to show you about uh, the master volume. And on the next one, we'll move on and we'll do preset, visual preset recall on an encoder on a Panasonic camera with grabbing thumbnails. And that's going to be awesome.